Today, we're diving deep into a story that's as mysterious as the ocean's depths. We're talking about the Titan Submersible, a marvel of modern engineering designed to explore the furthest reaches of our planet's oceans. But did you know that this extraordinary vessel, capable of plunging over 13,100 feet below the ocean's surface, is controlled by a simple gaming controller just like the one you might have at home? And that's not all. The Titan Submersible, a £23,000 vessel, operates with just one button, functioning like an elevator according to OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush. But what else don't we know about this incredible machine? What secrets lie beneath its titanium and carbon fibre exterior? Join us as we uncover the hidden truths about the Titan Submersible that they're not telling you. So buckle up, because this journey is going to be a deep dive into the unknown. Now let's delve into the origins of the Titan Submersible and the company behind it. The Titan Submersible, a marvel of modern engineering, is a testament to human curiosity and our unending quest to explore the unknown. This deep-sea submersible was designed and built by OceanGate, a company founded in 2009 by Stockton Rush. OceanGate's mission is to open the ocean's vast and largely unexplored frontier to human exploration. The company's vision is to allow scientists, explorers and enthusiasts to safely and sustainably observe, research and appreciate the underwater world. The Titan Submersible is a significant step towards achieving this goal. To understand the journey of the Titan, we need to look back at the beginnings of OceanGate. OceanGate's first submersible, Cyclops Worst, was acquired as a refurbished vessel with a unique history. Originally built in 1973 for tourist use in the North Sea, it went through several ownership changes before OceanGate acquired it. The partnership between OceanGate and the University of Washington's Applied Physics Laboratory aimed to improve the submersible's cosmetic and electrical aspects with the goal of accommodating passengers for underwater exploration. However, a rift emerged between OceanGate and the University of Washington, leading to their departure from the collaboration. OceanGate had to continue the project on their own without the support of a renowned institution. Phil McCallum, an experienced figure known for his commercial trips to the Titanic, played a pivotal role in advising OceanGate on marketing, logistics and constructing a multi-passenger submersible for the Titanic expedition. However, the path to the creation of the Titan was not without its hurdles. Disagreements arose between Rush and McCallum regarding the marine certification of the submersible. McCallum emphasised the importance of working with classification societies for safety and operational standards while Rush wanted to maintain control over OceanGate's designs. This clash led to McCallum's withdrawal from the project, highlighting the differing philosophies between Rush and industry experts. Let's take a closer look at the Titan Submersible itself. The Titan Submersible has a rich history. It was designed to carry five individuals to the depths beyond 3,000 metres, a feat that few submersibles can achieve. The Titan was not just built for exploration, but also to withstand the immense pressures of the deep sea. Its construction involved the use of advanced materials such as carbon fibre and titanium, which are known for their strength and durability. These materials were chosen to ensure the submersible's structural integrity. Even under the extreme pressures found at such depths, the Titan's design and capabilities are truly impressive. The Titan is a 22-foot long, 9.2-foot wide, and 8.3-foot high vessel, weighing approximately 23,000 pounds. It can carry up to 15 10 pounds and is designed to reach depths of up to 4,000 meters, 13,123 feet. This makes it one of the few submersibles capable of reaching the depths where the Titanic wreckage lies at 2,800 meters below the ocean's surface. Safety was a paramount concern in the design of the Titan. The submersible is equipped with state or of the art technology to ensure the safety and comfort of its passengers. It has a real-time hull health monitoring RTM system that analyzes the effects of changing pressure on the vessel as it dives deeper. This system can accurately assess the integrity of the structure and provide early warning detection for the pilot, allowing them to arrest the descent and safely return to the surface if necessary. Despite the advanced design and safety measures, the Titan's journey was marked by a tragic incident. The Titan Submersible is a testament to OceanGate's commitment to pushing the boundaries of ocean exploration. However, 
It's important to note that the journey to the deep sea is not without risks. Well, the deep sea is an amazing place, but what's really amazing about it is you can't see very far. And I can remember when we came in on the Titanic for the first time, it was less than 30, 40 vaft away. We came in a beam of the bridge and it was like a giant wall of steel. So it's very intimate in that regard, but it's very unforgiving. You can't see pressure. In June 2023, a tragic incident unfolded when the Titan, carrying a crew of five individuals, suffered a catastrophic implosion near the century-old wreckage of the Titanic. The incident resulted in the loss of all lives on board, highlighting the inherent dangers of deep-sea exploration. The construction of the Titan was a feat of engineering. It was built from carbon fibre and titanium materials chosen for their strength and lightness. The use of these materials allowed the submersible to withstand the immense pressures of the deep sea while maintaining a relatively lightweight structure. However, the choice of materials also presented challenges. Carbon fibre and titanium are notoriously difficult to work with, requiring specialised skills and equipment. Furthermore, the construction process had to ensure a perfect seal to prevent water ingress, a task that becomes increasingly difficult as the depth and pressure increase. In addition to its robust construction, the Titan was also packed with cutting-edge technology. The Titan was also equipped with a plethora of technological innovations. It boasted a state-of-the-art sonar system for navigation and object detection, high-definition cameras for capturing detailed images of the ocean floor, and powerful lighting systems to illuminate the dark depths of the ocean. However, these systems were not without their challenges. The extreme conditions of the deep sea, including high pressure, Low temperatures and corrosive salt water posed significant hurdles to the operation and longevity of these systems. The Titan Submersible's expedition to the Titanic wreckage was a mission of historical significance and scientific discovery. The Titanic, a symbol of human ambition and tragedy, has rested at the bottom of the North Atlantic Ocean since its ill-fated maiden voyage in 1912. The wreckage lies at a depth of about 12,500 bift, a realm of perpetual darkness and crushing pressure. The Titan Submersible, with its advanced technology and robust design, was one of the few vessels capable of reaching this depth. The Titan's mission was not just a technical challenge, but also a journey of historical significance. However, it's important to note that there were concerns raised about the Titan Submersible prior to the tragic incident. Stanley, a submersible expert, had noticed something wrong with the vessel when loud noises were heard during a dive in 2019. He suspected defects in the vessel and had sent an email to Rush about his concerns. The expedition was led by Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate, who also served as one of the pilots of the Titan. Rush, a visionary in the field of ocean exploration, was deeply involved in the design and operation of the Titan. His leadership was instrumental in the planning and execution of the expedition. The crew also included a team of scientists, engineers, and deep-sea explorers, each bringing their unique expertise to the mission. The goal of the expedition was to explore the Titanic wreckage and gather data for scientific research. The crew planned to document the state of the wreckage, study the marine life inhabiting the site, and create a detailed 3D map of the ship and its debris field. The Titan was equipped with high-resolution cameras and sonar to capture detailed images and data. However, the expedition was not without its challenges. The crew had to navigate the treacherous underwater terrain and deal with the technical complexities of operating a submersible at such extreme depths. The Titan's advanced systems, including its propulsion and communication systems, were put to the test during the expedition. Despite the meticulous planning and advanced technology, the expedition faced numerous challenges. One of the former passengers, CBS Sunday morning correspondent David Pogue, described the experience inside the Titan as being in a minivan without seats. I didn't know at that point that you drive the thing with an Xbox game controller. I didn't know that the ballast was used. Construction pipes. You get there and then you start seeing this stuff and now your mood crashes and you get a little worried like, is this the level of polish and sophistication we're talking about? He mentioned that there were a couple of computer screens and a round window about 21 inches across through which the passengers could view the Titanic wreckage. The submersible was piloted using a game controller, a testament to its user-friendly design. We run the whole thing with this game controller. However, the Titan's journey to the Titanic ended in tragedy. 
The Titan submersible was manned by a diverse group of individuals, each with their own unique backgrounds and motivations. The passengers on the ill-fated voyage included Stockton Rush, the CEO of Oceangate, British businessman Hamish Harding, Pakistani investor Shazada D. A. Wood, and his son Suleiman, and French diver Paul Henry Nargiol. Hamish Harding, a 58-year-old British billionaire businessman and explorer, was the chairman of Action Aviation, an aviation sales and consulting company. He was an explorer by nature and held three Guinness World Records, including the fastest flight around both the Earth's poles in 2019, the longest duration at a full ocean depth by a crewed vessel and the longest distance travelled along the deepest part of the ocean. Shazada Dawood, the vice chairman of Engro, a Pakistani energy investment company, and the Dawood Hercules Corps, an investment and holdings firm, had expertise in mergers and acquisitions in companies across industries such as textiles, fertilizers, foods, and energy. He served on various boards, including the SETI Institute, a NASA-funded non-profit dedicated to extraterrestrial research, and Prince Charles's charity, Prince's Trust International. He obtained an undergraduate law degree from Buckingham University in the UK and a Master's of Science in Global Textile Marketing from Philadelphia University. Suleiman Dawood, the 19-year-old son of Shazada Dawood, had recently completed his first year as a business major at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, Scotland. He was a college student with a keen interest in the expedition, following in his father's adventurous footsteps. Stockton Rush founded Ocean Gate in 2009 and served as the organization's CEO, overseeing the development of submersibles that would be able to travel up to 20,000 feet below the ocean's surface. In 1981, Rush became the youngest jet transport rated pilot in the world at the time at 19. Flying to destinations such as Cairo, Mumbai and Zurich, he received a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from Princeton University and a business master's degree from UC Berkeley. In 1989, he developed his own experimental aircraft, which he had flown before. Paul-Henri Narjalai, known as Mr. Titanic for his expertise of the ship, spent 22 years in the French Navy, where he was eventually ranked commander. He retired from the Navy in 1986 and oversaw two deep-sea submersibles at the French Institute for Research and Exploitation of the Sea. He led the first recovery dive to the Titanic wreckage in 1987 and was the director of underwater research for RMS Titanic Inc., a company dedicated to preserving the history of the Titanic and the M Group, a company that provides exhibitions and other entertainment. He completed 37 dives in a submersible to the Titanic shipwreck over the course of his career and supervised the retrieval of 5,000 of its artifacts, including a 20-ton section. These individuals were not just crew members, but pioneers, explorers and adventurers, each with their own unique stories and backgrounds. The Titanic, one of the most luxurious ships of her time, has left an indelible mark on history, but the legacy of the Titanic extends far beyond the tragedy of its sinking. The first Titanic newsreel films were released within days of the disaster. There have also been many drama films set aboard Titanic. The British film A Night to Remember is still widely regarded as the most historically accurate movie portrayal of the sinking, but the most successful by far has been James Cameron's Titanic, which became the highest grossing film in history up to that time. The tragic implosion of the Titan submersible during its expedition to the Titanic is a heart-wrenching incident that has left the world in shock. The Titan was on a mission to explore the wreckage of the Titanic, a historical endeavour that turned into a devastating catastrophe. The submersible, operated by Oceangate Expeditions, lost contact with its parent ship, the Canadian-owned Polar Prince. About an hour and 45 minutes after submerging, the vessel was equipped with a 96 hours oxygen supply, but the sudden loss of contact indicated a grave situation. The US Coast Guard, in collaboration with Canadian Coast Guards and other international teams, launched a massive search and rescue operation. The search spanned an area of the North Atlantic twice the size of Connecticut. Despite the vast and treacherous underwater environment, the teams remained hopeful of finding the submersible and its passengers. However, the search ended with the discovery of debris from the Titan submersible about 1,600 feet from the Titanic wreckage, indicating a catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. The search and recovery operations were not without challenges. The vastness of the search area, 
the depth of the ocean, and the adverse conditions posed significant hurdles. The US Coast Guard resources included an HC-130 Hercules, long-range search aircraft from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. The Canadian Coast Guard, the Royal Canadian Navy, and other international assets were also deployed in the search operation. The recovery operation was further complicated by the depth at which the submersible imploded. The United Kingdom's Department of Defense stated early in the search that the missing submersible was at depths that greatly exceeded the capabilities of the NATO submarine rescue system. Despite these challenges, the teams remained committed to their mission. The search operation transitioned into an investigation phase with the US Coast Guard convening a Marine Board of Investigation to probe the implosion. The US Coast Guard reported that presumed human remains were among the debris and evidence recovered from the seafloor where the remnants of the doomed Titan submersible were found. This discovery was a grim reminder of the tragic loss of life that occurred during the expedition. The debris field, located near the Titanic wreckage, was extensively searched by remotely operated vehicles. These vehicles were equipped with cameras and other equipment to identify and recover items from the seafloor. The operation was a painstaking process due to the depth of the ocean and the scattered nature of the debris. Following the discovery of the debris, the focus shifted from search and rescue to investigation. The presumed human remains found in the debris field will be subjected to further analysis as part of the ongoing investigation into the disaster. The analysis aims to confirm the identity of the remains and provide closure to the families of the victims. It's a delicate process that requires careful handling and expertise. The discovery of the remains has added a somber note to the investigation. It underscores the human cost of the disaster and the risks associated with the deep sea exploration. The incident has led to calls for stricter safety measures and regulations for such expeditions. The investigators are also examining voice recordings and data from the Polar Prince the mothership that carried the Titan submersible before it imploded. Deep sea exploration presents unique psychological challenges due to the extreme conditions, isolation and potential dangers. The confinement and isolation can lead to anxiety, depression and feelings of disconnection. The high-risk environment can result in chronic stress, which can have both physical and mental health impacts. Anticipation of a dive can cause stress and dealing with the aftermath of any incidents can involve processing psychological trauma. The high-pressure environment, where any mistake could have serious consequences, can also contribute to chronic stress and anxiety. In the aftermath of the tragic implosion of the Titan submersible, a significant debris field was discovered. The tail cone and other fragments from the missing submersible were found by a remotely operated vehicle about 1,600 fefts from the bow of the Titanic. The US Coast Guard stated that the debris was consistent with a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. The investigation into the cause of the implosion revealed some crucial findings. A senior Navy official disclosed that the Navy had detected an acoustic signature consistent with an implosion in the general area where the vessel was diving and lost communication with its mothership. This information was immediately relayed to the commanders leading the search effort and was used to narrow down the area of the search. The aftermath of the incident brought to light some crucial findings. The response from OceanGate, the company that operated the deep sea submersible, was one of grief and shock. They issued a statement mourning the loss of the five men on board, including their CEO, Stockton Rush. The company acknowledged the men as true explorers who shared a spirit of adventure and a deep passion for exploring and protecting the world's oceans. The impact on OceanGate's operations has been significant. In the wake of the disaster, the company announced that it has suspended its exploration and commercial operations. This decision reflects the gravity of the incident and the need for a thorough investigation into the cause of the implosion. The incident has raised questions about the safety measures in place for such deep-sea explorations. The Titan submersible was relied on low-tech parts, such as a video game controller, an operation like OceanGate that unfortunately didn't believe in certification. They were using experimental technology to take paying passengers to the Titanic. I mean, this whole thing is inexcusable. It's a tragedy. The focus now is on piecing together what exactly happened and how to best prevent it from happening again. 
In the aftermath of the tragic Titan submersible incident, regulatory bodies played a pivotal role in investigating the circumstances and implementing necessary changes to prevent such disasters in the future. The Canadian Transportation Safety Board launched a safety investigation into the undersea implosion of the Titan submersible. The TSB's decision to investigate was influenced by the fact that the surface support vessel for the Titan, the Polar Prince, was a Canadian flagged ship. A team was dispatched to St. John Access, Newfoundland, to gather information and conduct interviews as part of the investigation. The TSB's investigation raised questions about the unregulated nature of such expeditions. The Titan Submersible, operated by US-based Ocean Gate Expeditions, had opted to forego certification of its novel design from industry third parties, such as the American Bureau of Shipping. This decision was met with criticism from within the close-knit community of submersible operators and experts. Some questioned OceanGate's choice of materials for the critical pressure hull of the craft, and others pointed out that the company had chosen to ignore warnings from many experts within the submersible community. In the United States, the Coast Guard and the National Transportation Safety Board also have broad authority to investigate certain marine casualties. The NTSB in particular has the power to investigate marine casualties, and stakeholders should understand the distinctions between these authorities. The US has regulations in place related to submersibles with passengers for hire and the US. Coast Guard oversees such operations when they are subject to its jurisdiction classification. Societies also provide important guidance for submersible operators. The tragic loss of the Titan submersible has led to a renewed focus on the role of regulatory bodies in ensuring the safety of deep-sea expeditions. The incident has highlighted the need for stringent safety protocols, adherence to industry-accepted guidelines, and the importance of third-party oversight in the design and operation of submersibles. The role of regulatory bodies in such incidents is not just about investigating the causes, but also about implementing changes that can prevent such disasters in the future. Deep-sea exploration, such as the Titan Submersibles expedition, raises important ethical questions. The potential impact on marine ecosystems is a significant concern, as disruptions can have unknown effects on these largely unexplored environments. There's also debate over whether certain areas like the Titanic wreckage should be left undisturbed due to their historical and cultural significance. They must balance the encouragement of industry development with the protection of the marine environment, a dual role that some critics argue can lead to conflicts of interest. OceanGate have been the subjects of numerous controversies and criticisms, particularly concerning safety measures and the decision not to seek certification for the vessel. Years before the Titan submersible went missing in the Atlantic Ocean, OceanGate faced several warnings as it prepared for its hallmark mission of taking wealthy passengers to tour the Titanic's wreckage. In January 2018, the company's engineering team was about to hand over the craft to a new crew who would be responsible for ensuring the safety of its future passengers. However, experts inside and outside the company began to sound alarms, warning of potential dangers and urging the company to undergo a certification process. These warnings were not unfounded. A former employee of OceanGate, David Lockridge, a Scottish submarine pilot, lodged major concerns about the vessel in a quality inspection report. According to Lockridge, there had been almost no unmanned testing of the craft. The alarm system would only sound off milliseconds before an implosion, and the porthole was only certified to withstand pressure of 1,300 metres. Even though OceanGate planned to take the submersible 4,000 metres underwater, Lockridge alleged that he was met with hostility and denial of access to necessary documentation during his inspection. He was soon given approximately 10 minutes to immediately clear out his desk and exit the premises. OceanGate's approach to safety protocols has also been criticised. The company faced a series of mechanical problems and inclement weather conditions that forced the cancellation or delays of trips in recent years, leading to a pair of lawsuits in which some high-paying customers sought to recoup the cost of trips they said they didn't take. The complaints allege the company overstated its ability to reach the Titanic wreckage. OceanGate, the company that operated the Titan submersible, has shown resilience in the face of adversity, despite the tragic incident that led to the loss of five lives. The company has announced new expedition dates on its website. These expeditions are set to take place in 2024, 
demonstrating the company's commitment to continue its deep-sea exploration endeavors. The first expedition is scheduled to take place from June 12th to June 20th, while the second is planned between June 21st and June 29th. Each trip is priced at $25,000 per person, covering one submersible dive, private accommodations, training and expedition gear, as well as meals on board. The company also ensures Wi-Fi connectivity on board, allowing participants to stay connected throughout the eight-day expedition. These expeditions will embark on a dive towards the legendary wreckage of the Titanic. Participants will be treated to an unmatched and thrilling experience exploring the historic site. Firsthand, however, it is highly unlikely that the authorities will allow Ocean Gate to conduct another trip without proper approvals. Following the tragic implosion of the Titan submersible Ocean Gate, the company that operated the vessel announced the suspension of all its exploration and commercial operations. The announcement was made via a brief statement posted on the company's website. The company did not provide further details about the suspension. The company's website still featured a photo of the wreck of the Titanic with the tagline Explore the World's Most Famous Shipwreck. But it was no longer possible to book a trip, and some of the site's other features were not functioning. Legal experts anticipate that family members of those killed will file lawsuits not only against OceanGate, but also against the Titan's maker and companies that provided parts. However, if OceanGate completely shuts down, it could limit their options for recovering damages. However, there is one important question that remains unanswered. Should OceanGate be allowed to continue its deep-sea exploration expeditions after the tragic incident involving the Titan submersible? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And like always, with that said, thanks for watching, and until next time. Mysterious Minds